So have you ever been playing a video game and you've been so focused on your main objective fighting off the enemies that you kind of just miss some of the smaller things in the game that if you didn't really have them pointed out to you that you probably wouldn't even know they existed. Well today I got you covered on some of the things in MWZ. This video is 12 details about MWZ that you probably missed. I'll be going over some things that are in the game that are just kind of small details and minor things that a lot of people probably miss because they're too busy fighting zombies fighting bosses, doing their missions, completing contracts, just doing whatever they're doing. And these things just don't stand out because they're just minor Easter eggs or minor things that nobody really pays attention to and they get overlooked because there's other things that draw your attention to. Anyways, I'm going to be throwing these out kind of fast because most of them there's not really much to talk about or really worth noting. They're just cool little interesting facts or details or events in the game that most people will miss and don't even really know exist so anyways let's get into this video first detail you probably missed is there are laptops around the map that will play an audio log giving you information about the story similar to radios in older zombies maps that would give you information about the easter egg and the stories related to those maps Another detail you probably missed in MWZ is if you shoot a vehicle and set off its alarm. This will attract all normal zombies and normal zombie enemies to it for a short period of time, similar to a decoy grenade or a symbol monkey. An interesting detail that you'll only find in the Dark Aether section of the map is that if you break certain crystals found around the area, they will actually drop equipment for you, such as armor plate, grenades, ammo, various things like that. This is one that has actually returned from Cold War Zombies and is only available in the Dark Aether area of MWZ. A curious detail that only people that have used the final XOR have probably seen is that redeploy drones will actually relocate themselves. Once the Aether Storm has hit them, they will tend to move towards an area that the Aether Storm is not currently at, and they seem to keep doing this as long as there's players in the game and the storm is continuing to expand. This next detail is actually kind of useful, and it is that PhD Flopper blocks the fire damage from Hellhounds when they explode. Without this perk, you will take consistent fire damage and have a flinch effect on screen, but if you have the perk, the dogs fire do no damage to you whatsoever. This detail is actually a feature that has returned from DMZ mode, and that is you can actually successfully exfil while on the outside of the exfil helicopter. Now this includes sitting on the wing like I am here, and also any other part of the helicopter that you can be on where you are not taking damage from the rotor blades. This detail is a useful one for you, all you solo players out there, and that is your first completed contract in game will always give you a self revive as a reward in the reward rift. Now, this seems kind of odd or just possibly RNG based, but every game I've ever played solo, the first contract always gives me a self revive in the first contract reward rift I complete.
This next minor detail is one for all my OG zombie players out there, and that is the background ambience noise in MWC is actually ripped straight from Call of Duty World at War Zombies. Now, it's not every single sound, it's not the exact soundtrack or all the ambience sounds, but a lot of them and most of them are from World at War, and I have got the clips to kind of show that. You'll see that the same sounds are playing in MWC as in World at War Zombies as well. This next detail is kind of a curious one in that it is Pack-a-Punch actually does not work on the AI mercenary soldiers. Now, that sounds a little bit crazy, but after some hand testing I've done in game, it doesn't seem to have any more effect on the AI than it does on Pack-a-Punch. It takes the same number of bullets to kill the same type of AI enemy, and the weapon doesn't seem to matter if it's Pack-a-Punch or unpack punch It still takes X number of bullets to kill them either way. So it's kind of unfortunate, but at the same time, it makes sense from a lore perspective that Pack of Punch only works on Aether enemies and not normal real life enemies. This detail is related to the previous one, and that is that Aether Shroud and Frenzy Guard field upgrades have no effect on the mercenaries either. Now this detail is one that I know nobody pays attention to, and that is that when guns are pack-a-punched, they do get a custom name for them. Every single weapon in the game when pack-a-punched, regardless of the method that is pack-a-punched, gets a custom name in addition to the camo and the obvious damage and ammo upgrades as well. And for the final detail in this video, and probably a questionable one, but one that seems to hold some truth, is that suppressors do basically nothing in this mode. It doesn't matter if you fire a suppressed gun or an unsuppressed gun, the zombies, the AI, all of them will know exactly where you're at when firing, especially if you hit one of them. It's just something that doesn't seem to have any effect no matter what you do or how you use them. As you can see from the video footage, if you shoot a zombie or hit an enemy AI, they immediately know where you're firing from and know where you're at. Suppressors have no viable benefit in this game right now over just quieting your weapon down if you think they're too loud. I also did some testing to see if they also cause zombies to drop more power-ups in a game as they kind of did in Black Ops 4 and it doesn't seem to matter if you have a suppressor in your weapon or not, the drop rate is roughly the same. Also tested with subsonic ammo firing weapons and just regular ones. Also no effect with using a suppressor on them or not. Just seems like if you fire your weapon at all, enemies will just know where you're at regardless. And there's like no discrepancy in distance or if you're shooting at them or not, if you're within a certain range of them, they just automatically know where you're at when firing. 
But there you have it. That is the 12 details about MWZ you probably missed while you was playing. Most of these are probably useless or that nobody really would care about, but some of them are kind of cool or have a bit of use to them as well. And I would say there's probably at least one of these that you probably didn't know about because you just didn't witness it yet or you didn't know about it. And a lot of things in this game are yet to be discovered probably, so I'm sure this could be expanded upon and there's probably more details out there that you'll miss and I've missed, so... Anyways, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, comment about it. And if you'd like to see some more MWZ videos like this, please subscribe. Anyways, until the next video, I'll catch you all later.